Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm okay, Conrad. Thanks. How you doing, buddy? Man, I'm all right. I'm excited. It's going to be a big wrestling week. There's lots of uh, professional wrestling to consume, and I, for one, am here for it. But uh, I guess we should just uh, mention right at the top of the show, we got a Ring of Honor pay per view this weekend. Super Card of Honor 2024 coming your way. Tickets on sale now if you're in the Philadelphia area. R O H T I X dot com. Looking like a pretty fun card. The main event is our old pal Eddie Kingston defending his Ring of Honor World Championship against Mark Briscoe. As I understand it, 11 years to the day from when his brother Jay won the world title. Some things are just meant to be, right? I mean, that's that's wild. Yeah, anytime Eddie Kingston wrestles, it's a great show. So <clears throat> it's going to be great. Uh, I will be there. I'll be in Philadelphia the entire weekend, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'll be signing uh, pictures and taking pictures and selling copies of Butts and Seats, <clears throat> autograph copies of Butts and Seats uh, at uh, WrestleCon at the downtown Sheraton. So I'll be there the entire weekend. So be sure to catch uh, Tony Schiavone in Philadelphia and catch the ring of honor pay-per-view. Billy Starks is going to be in action. We got Kyle Fletcher defending against Lee Johnson for the ROH TV title. We got a stardom showcase six woman tag team match. Word to the wise. That's probably the show stealer. Then we got Athena and Sheeta. We got Johnny TV and Dalton castle, but the main event, you and I both love Eddie Kingston and Mark Briscoe, and this is going to be a lot of fun. All right, Tony, but before we do, got a quick question for you, Tony. Okay. When was the last time you did a Google search for your name or your email address? Matter of fact, while we're doing that, just type in your email address in your Google machine. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you're going to be shocked what you see. I was, I'm kind of uncomfortable with how much of my information has been exposed. And it turns out it's not only exposed, it's for sale. What? Yeah. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to meet you. They've got your full name, your email, your home address, dude. They've got your health records, even your relatives. It's all out there. And that's why Tony and I have been using aura, the sponsor of today's video Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Now I got to tell you, I didn't even really know all that I needed to know about this. I've been in the mortgage biz for over 20 years. So I thought I was in the loop on credit and all that stuff. But these data brokers, man, this was a blind spot as to how big of a business it is. You see, cleaning up my information not only helps me reduce the amount of spam I get, but it also protects me from hackers who could use the information to help them access my social media accounts, my bank accounts, or any other sensitive information. Right. Or it right. does so much to protect me and my family from online threats I can't even see. Not only that, with Aura, you get other features like antivirus and VPN and password management, even things like parental control. And how about identity theft insurance? All this and a lot more without having to download several different apps. It's really easy to set up. And best of all, you get everything at one affordable price. And you might already have one or two of those tools in your back pocket already, but not having Aura is like locking the front door, but leaving your back door wide open. Aura is always on doing the hard work, keeping me safe. So we can focus on all the other tasks at hand. We value our privacy and we value yours. So go right now to aura.com slash W H W that's a U R a.com slash W H W. And you can start your two week trial for free. It's also linked below in the description for today's episode, but we want you right now to stop data brokers from exposing your personal information. And go to our sponsor, aura.com slash WHW, get that 14 day free trial and see just how much of yours is being sold. We should uh, be great at the Leah chorus center. It's on temple. It's a temple. That's where we've had uh, a couple of uh, dynamites as well. We, uh, we also want to mention that, uh, tonight as folks are listening to this is a, a pretty badass uh, dynamite. You guys have uh, promoted most of the card. Jericho is going to call out hook. We got a contract signing for the big pay-per-view later in the month with Samoa Joe and Swerve Strickland. Can't wait to see all the fireworks in that. And a lot of other fun stuff that's been promoted for this show. It's going to wind up being almost like a super show because 
Collision this Saturday night has a special start time. It's going to come out at 1130 Eastern. That's 1130 at night Eastern. So hypothetically, if you might be watching some wrestling before that, well, when that goes off, just man, fire it up. Collision coming your way. 1130 late night wrestling, Tony. It feels a little bit like ECW. Well, oddly enough, this is a day for ECW. Yes, it is right here on the program. We are going to be uh, doubling down on ECW. That is going to be our topic today. I'm pretty fired up about this too, but before we do, I should mention that we are just a few weeks away from what most people believe to be a match of the year candidate before the show even starts. Brian Danielson is going to be in singles action against Will Ospreay. It's happening in St. Louis on Sunday, April 21st. And we are on the road to AEW dynasty. So put down your phone when you're on the road. And I know this action is going to be fantastic. I mean, that match between Osprey and Danielson, it's already got so much buzz. People are thinking it's a match of the year candidate before the bell rang, but we see them every day. These people driving, using their phones. There's the old sneak a peeker or the fast scroller who can quickly become the fender bender -er, and they got a ticket or -er, -er. Or the driver who killed someone, put the phone away or pay paid for by NHTSA. Tony, we, uh, we are going to be watching some ECW because, uh, man, the wrestling world is going to be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania this weekend. And I thought, man, since we're, we're inducting Paul Heyman into the WWE hall of fame, and there's going to be an ECW vibe around the town all weekend. Let's watch some old ECW from the good old days. So we're going to be watching not one, but two episodes of hardcore TV, as they call it over on Peacock. We're going to be watching from March 18th, 1996 and March 25th, 1996. These shows actually recap what was a uh, home video release once upon a time called the big ass extreme bash. Isn't that a fun name? Big ass extreme bash. Huh. Well, that's apropos, isn't it? Well, it is. We, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to have a lot of fun with this because this is what a lot of people consider like the height of ECW, you know, when they were at their, at their best. And there's a lot of moving parts on these shows. I should mention that we're going to see cactus Jack's final appearance in ECW He's wow. going to be leaving ECW and going to work for Vince McMahon's WWF. And this will be his last appearance as cactus Jack for over a year. We know eventually Cactus Jack would show up on WWE programming, but they wanted to put him under hood and call him mankind. And Mick Foley, like with everything else, made it work. We're also going to see Chris Jericho and Taz. And if you recently saw Taz and Hook, some of that might seem familiar. We also mm -hmm. have uh, Raven and Shane Douglas in singles action. We'll, uh, we'll see Brian Pillman a lot. This is when he's doubling down on the old loose cannon business and the I'm leaving WCW and I can go anywhere sort of thing. And we'll see Ray Mysterio and Juventud Guerrera in a two out of three falls match that still holds up to this wow. day. And Tony, wow. I don't think you've ever seen any of this show, right? No, I've not by design. Well, I, uh, I'm looking forward to you seeing it. It's going to be a blast. We want you to watch along with us. It's uh, season four of hardcore TV. It's episode 12. That's season four episode 12 on your peacock and uh, I'm locked and loaded. I'm ready to fire down, man. We're got some good wrestling to watch here. March 18th, 1996. Are you, uh, you ready to do a countdown on your side, Tony? Almost. I, I do want to say this. Uh, uh, I've received a lot of, uh, received a lot of condolences and thoughts and prayers about the loss of bug. And I should, uh, address it here. Um, uh, it was, uh, probably the, on this past Friday was the toughest day that I've ever spent. Uh, cause when you lose a pet that you love, it's part of the family. He was bigger than life. He put a, it, his, his absence here has put a big hole in, in our life. Lois just this morning before we got on the air was on with the people where who's, uh, who's got his remains and going to know, going to put them in a, in a little urn that we will put on the mantle with some other dogs that have passed away. We're also getting a stone and we're going to plant a dogwood tree in the front yard. And it's going to be his, 
going to put the little stone there, a little river stone, uh, mentioning bug and plant a pink dogwood in his, his memory. Um, I just really appreciate how the fans have reached out and not only the ones that we have here today on, uh, on, uh, Patreon, but, and I, and I sent you a text when I walked out, uh, to the arena on, uh, on Friday or on Saturday, um, when, um, we were in London, Ontario, as I'm walking, uh, to the broadcast position, I, a fan says, God bless bug, Tony. And I turned around, he was patting his chest and I acknowledged him. And I also heard a couple of people say his name as well. Uh, this was uh, the greatest dog I ever had by far. And, uh, um, I'm, uh, this, I've said, and Lois, Lois is going, no, no, it's too soon. And I know it's too soon, but I said, I, I got to have another Chihuahua and here's why, or I got to have another dog because there are plenty of dogs out there that need our love. Yes. Tons of them. They're, they're, they're the, uh, uh, Atlanta Humane Society and, uh, many of the places are just overflowed have uh, too many dogs. So as the old dog will, if you look it up, it's, it's called dog's will. Uh, dog, a dog cannot will anything to you because a dog does not really own anything. But the dog wills you uh, his love to give to another dog. And that's what I'm going to do. Although I don't know when I'm going to do it. Um, it's been a tough time here. It's been a tough, tough few days. I still got some crazy dogs here that I just absolutely love. And they're just wonderful dogs, but bug was a big part. He was always right here. Uh, and he was always with me everywhere. Uh, and he got very, very sick very quickly. And, uh, it was a very tough day. I appreciate all the love from everyone. I really do. You Conrad, I know Dave, you guys reached out and were very kind and, and I appreciate everyone. It's not easy. And I did, I, but, you know what? Like George Carlin said one time, and George Carlin had dogs, love dogs. He said, that's the deal. When you get them, you know, it's only temporary. And, um, yeah, that's the way it is. So thank you for all your uh, love and support. Kindness. I, uh, was going to wait and do that at the end of the show. Cause I didn't want okay. you to be emotional, but I am, uh, very, very sympathetic. You know how important our dogs are in our household and. I know Bruce is a dog guy and Eric's a dog guy and Dave's a dog guy. And we're all kind of dog people. And uh, I think those are the best kind of people. And, you know, I, I we've had such a, a fun time with bug here on the show. Of course, I've had fun breaking your balls about bug, but you know, we had bug temporary tattoos because you actually have a bug tattoo and, mm, right here. and we even had you know, at the Gwinnett Braves, they did a Tony Schiavone bobblehead and you said, can we put bug on there? So bug's mm -hmm. been memorialized more than one way in your baseball right. life in your podcast life. And now in your wrestling life. And I'm just freestyling here, Tony, but I think you hit the nail on the head and you said, there's a lot of dogs out there who really need our love. Uh, what if we did, uh, what if we did a bug t-shirt and all the proceeds went to the Atlanta humane society to help help some other dogs. That sounds good. Let's, uh, let's give it to, uh, there's another, uh, organization here, uh, that we, uh, Lois and I donate to, and I think we ought to give it to them. It's called angels among us Okay. in Atlanta. Uh, and I, they do, a, they do a great job of, of going out and getting pets out they have, uh, events all the time in front of, you know, in front of like pet stores and everything where they bring dogs out and get them, uh, uh, them out there to the public and get them adopted. So let's do that. And, uh, I think it'll be great. We're going to work on that. We'll put all that together and, uh, we'll have that shirt up for you at loisrules.com and maybe even over at pro wrestling tees.com, but we'll get those designs together and have a link and, uh, everybody go enjoy WrestleMania and we'll have that in time for you yeah. next week here on the show. I didn't want to bombard you over the weekend because I knew that, man, this had to be tough. I was shocked and not shocked. When your daughter, Lori told me that you were going to be at TV and you were, yeah, and just in case you weren't up to it, 
Mm-hmm. As I understand it, they had Ian Riccoboni there yep. to, uh, to help out. And I thought watching the broadcast during that tag match, when he went out of his way to mention bug, man, what a class move by Tony, by Ian, by AEW, just by the wrestling community. You know, we, sometimes you and I get on here sometimes and we talk about how silly some of the tribalism is and all the anti AEW or pro, uh, AEW and anti WWE, all that can just be a toxic place sometimes on social media. And, and you even, you know, echo that sentiment a lot that, you know, assholes live on Twitter, that sort of thing. But right. every now and again, something like bug brings a lot of people together and it feels like everybody sort of puts their swords down for a little bit. And that's sort of the miracle of dogs, isn't it, Tony? Yeah. Dogs are the most incredible thing in the world. They are, they're the most loving I can, we, uh, and bug was like this too, but we've had this puppy, uh, scout and we got her, uh, we, they said she was a beagle, but she ain't, <laughs> she's the color of a beagle. She is more. And we found out she's more Australian cattle dog than anything else. And she's out of her mind. So I can go upstairs and come back downstairs and she'll jump up on me. Like she hadn't seen me in years. And it's just a wonderful place to, to have dogs, to be able to go on the road like I do and come back. And every time I come back, the dogs just absolutely love me. And, uh, there, there is absolutely nothing, nothing like a dog. I, I appreciate you. You mentioned, uh, of course I was going to go to TV. Uh, and, um, uh, Tony was so, so sympathetic to me. Uh, he has sent me some things here. He, he sent us flowers. Um, also had flowers uh, sent from uh, Ruby Ruby Soho and uh, Angelo Parker, and um, but and this is to everybody out there who has a who likes to uh, rip on Tony Khan. He is genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever been around in my life. Yes, he really is. And and you, you may say, "Oh, you're sucking up the boss." If that's what you think, go fuck yourself because I'm not. He's genuinely one of the nicest people in the world. Now, when TV starts, his demeanor can change. (laughs) (laughs) On Wednesdays and Saturdays, but he is genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever been around in my life. He really is. He's so sympathetic and so nice and so caring and such a good person. Uh, And I just wanted to get that out there. And, uh, for those of you who knew Bug, I know there's a couple of you on here that got to meet him. His real name was Pippin. Laurie, who had him first, called him Doodle Bug. She said, look at that little Doodle Bug. And the term Bug just, uh, just hung out. And he would, he would answer to Pippin, and he would answer to Bug. Because he was bigger than life. He knew everything. Never ro- went out in the road. We could take the dogs outside, and he would never go on the road. He always listened to me and, uh, I know you guys have seen pictures of me sitting in the uh, driveway with oh, Bug yeah. Oh, yeah. On his own chair and warm weather is coming. And Lois said, uh, you're going to have one of the beagles sitting in the chair with you. I said, well, maybe one of them, not, but not the crazy one. Uh, so, uh, very tough, very tough week, but thanks for all the love you, Conrad, Dave, everybody here is online. I know, uh, Megan Nelson's online here. She has met Bug. Uh, Brooke is online here. She has met Bug. And uh, tough time. But anyway, on we go. Let's watch some. Uh, let's watch some uh, wrestling. Before we do uh, a little bit of wrestling, we should remind you that today's show and all of our shows is brought to you by Blue Chew. Uh, we really appreciate their sponsorship. They are day one sponsors for us, and we would encourage you to try to support our sponsors if you appreciate what we're doing here on the show. Check out our sponsors and with Blue Chew, they make it easy because they have a special offer where it's free. Stay tuned. In case you're not familiar, Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers to you the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Now you can take these day or night and uh, be sure to plan ahead or just be ready whenever an opportunity arises. And the process has never been simpler. You'll sign up with one of their Uh, You'll sign up at bluechew.com and then consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And then once you're approved, man, it shows up in just a few days at your house there. 
It's prepared and shipped directly to your door, but in a discreet package. But the best part about this is not that it's made in the USA, which it is, but it's that it's all online. You don't have to go to the doctor's office. There's no uncomfortable conversation. There's no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it really, really works. And by the way, Blue Chew is not just for guys who uh, <clears throat> have a problem. This is for mm. guys who want to put on a five-star performance. They're looking for a little repeat business if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Leave a lasting impression with Blue Chew. And uh, I'm telling you, it's going to pay dividends. It's going to be all smiles at your house. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Let's chew it and do it, y'all. We've got a special deal for our listeners. You can actually try Blue Chew free. When you use our mm. promo code WHW at checkout, just pay the $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. The promo code is WHW and you'll receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring today's podcast. Now, Tony, without further ado, I say we, uh, we like this dude up. This is going to be fun. I love watching old school ECW. I'm excited to watch it with you. I want you to go to Peacock and watch along with us. Let's do a two screen experience. You'll get the full effect from this podcast. It's season four of hardcore TV. So when you pull up Peacock, go to WWE, type in your search bar, hardcore TV season four, episode 12. It aired on March 19th, 1996, the so right around WrestleMania 12 or that really bad uncensored pay-per-view from WCW. Uh, so well, here we go, Tony, <laughs> you've got a, uh, a little countdown for us. Let's do it. Daddy. I'm not ready. Not ready to watch ECW. <laughs> I mean, I'm ready to watch it, but, uh, well, you know I, what, I think, while, uh, while you're trying to get ready, let me address okay. one of the elephants in the room. I didn't want okay. this to touch the bug conversation, but okay. as you and I are recording this on a Tuesday morning, yesterday mm -hmm. on April fool's day, uh, yeah. April 1st, Ariel Hawani hosts a, a fabulous show called the MMA hour. And normally it's all about mixed martial arts, but they had a special right. guest yesterday, a former MMA artist in. We know yep. him in professional wrestling as CM Punk. And he told mm -hmm. a couple of Shavor, a couple of, uh, Shivani stories. It included your okay. name. And I wanted to yep. give you a chance to, uh, respond to anything that Mr. Brooks may have said. Did he, uh, did he have a couple of stories about me? Well, it was referencing, uh, jungle boy, right? Yeah. I'm not sure what we're supposed to talk about or not talk about on your side yeah. of the fence, but yeah. he told the story that he was in catering and you came to see him and. Well, you know, the rest of the story, but he retold sure. that story and, right. uh, you know, your name was, was bandied about a little bit, not in a negative way. He was just explaining right. that you went to him looking for a little bit of help because the narrative was certainly out there. That collision was quote unquote, his show. And then right. he just sort of told the whole story, but there was a lot of AEW discussion. And with your name mentioned, I felt like I needed to at least mention it to you and give you a chance to respond. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I really don't give a shit about it. Uh, and, uh, I, I'm not going to get into this. If I, I know what he said and, uh, let him, uh, you need to talk if he wants That's all I got. Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, uh, I, I, look it. Okay. Um, I, uh, no, I don't give a shit. That's all I can say. I, I can't get into that. It, it would be stupid for me to get into that. I, I have no idea. I have no idea what he said with the exception of someone told me, oh, he brought up your name and here's what he said. And I went, so what? Right. So fucking what? No, no. He wasn't critical of you at all. I want to no, I know and that, that that's yeah. why I'm saying. So what? Yeah. Uh, I, I, if he was critical of me, people would say, oh, Shivani on his podcast is going to defend himself. Well, I have nothing to defend. No, no, not at um, all. I mean, unless you're defending I, AEW and. He was critical of AEW, as you might imagine, and he wasn't even super negative at times about Tony Khan. I mean, right. we don't have to relitigate it all. And Punk was even sort of cautious about saying, man, I just really don't want to talk about any of this. I'm not interested in relitigating it. It looks like he's moved on. AEW's moved on. Yeah. But That's I know good. that if I don't mention it to you, then all the comments are going to say, why didn't you mention anything? But I said to myself, yeah. self, zero chance Shivani watched this and even lower of a chance that he gives a shit. He's trying yeah. to work on today's show this week's show. Like uh, what I understand about your schedule is you're on the road every Wednesday doing TV. You're on the road every Saturday doing TV. And now this weekend, 
oh, by the way, we got a big Wednesday show and then a ring of honor pay-per-view on Friday and meet and greets all weekend. And then you'll be doing another show next week. Like the beat goes on. Yep. There's not time to look back and say, well, eight months ago, who, mm. cares? who cares? We're working on the next show. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's move on. Let's move on. March 18th, 1996. Uh, it's hardcore TV. We are excited to watch this with you. Season four, episode 12. Tony, let's do the countdown. Here we go. Okay. Uh, my countdown goes, uh, something like this. Uno, dos, tres, cinco. I think you and missed a cuatro, up? but okay. Uh, cuatro, cinco. I, I already pressed play. I, so, uh, what no. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, yeah. Well, back uh, it up. Here we go. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Three fucking two fucking one fucking play. There we go. So it's a, a recap from last week. We see Brian Pillman in the front row. We've got Joey Styles on this side of the barricade. Can't wait to see Joey do some stuff in uh, the wrestling space again. And there's Shane Douglas, who has a, a fun podcast these days. And man, they're going back and forth and. He's on a little bit of violence and you can see Pillman is really getting at Shane Douglas's goat and Shane looks like he's ready to haul off and punch him. But oh, Pillman pulls a woman and child right in front. Wow. D- Douglas isn't going to punch a baby. Pillman's a hell of a heel, man. Wasn't he? He was just, just so great of a heel. Let me ask you said, uh, is Joey styles coming back to wrestling? Oh no, he's he, okay. He I, put, you said, I can't wait to. I, I, he will eventually shit. Everybody comes back eventually. Yeah. Uh, you're right. You're right. I mean, you thought there was no chance you'd ever be back in this shit. Now yeah. look at you. Yeah. Man, I got to tell I like- you, I just love ECW, but what's funny to me, what stands out watching it back. Well, two things, watching this back on Peacock with the sound, you appreciate what a big deal and what a big part of the presentation, the music was, it was unlicensed music, of course. And now right. WWE's had to replace it with, uh, well, bullshit yeah. that doesn't really work. And right. it's not the same. It doesn't feel the same. It doesn't have the same vibe, but even like the building we're looking at here, this is a small building. Like this would have been considered like a spot show. If this was Jim Crockett promotion, like right. a really, really small building. And I just think as cool as this was, and as beloved as this was, if social media existed the way it does now back then. Boy, there'd be all kinds of tribalism, just people tearing it down about how small it was and, uh, look at the tiny crowd and, oh, they're using bad language and they're using unlicensed music. I mean, I think the narrative on ECW would be different, but because it didn't exist, social media didn't exist. I think people were just watching what they enjoyed. And I, for one loved this shit right here. Yeah. And so did our boss, Tony Khan absolutely loved it and talks about it all the time. And. It, and, and I've said this before about ECW. Of course, I didn't, I didn't see any of it, but these characters are, are absolutely incredible. What ECW brought to the wrestling world still exists today. Absolutely. Yeah. They were ahead of their time. Chair shots. We don't have those unprotected chair shots anymore. At least we, but we have the tables. Uh, we have. That's Missy uh, Hyatt all, making out right there. Is it really? Yeah. I just know you knew her from back in the day. Yeah, sure did. As a matter of fact, I still stay in touch with Missy on Facebook. She's a, she's a really uh, nice lady. I think she gets a bad rap. She's misunderstood. Of course she is. Uh, and I, I've always liked a couple of things I've liked. I've always liked the attitude of, of Joey styles. Such a and great I guy loved in real life. life. Yeah, he really is. And I always loved how they shot him. You see, if you're watching along with it, see how the camera is moving in and out yep. to Joey. Mm-hmm. That just made it different. Yes. Different angles of the camera. This, it, it made it extreme, right? Uh, and uh, so there's a lot of things I loved about this show. And again, they have set the ECW style is so much a part of what we do today because fans, still go bananas. It doesn't matter what match it is that we have fans go bananas. When someone pulls a table out underneath the, underneath the ring, you're going to like this, uh, segment we're watching. This is the bad crew with two, uh, um, 
high flyers, Damian stone off the top rope right there. But what's interesting is not this match, but what's about to happen right in the middle of the match. Well, someone's going to shit their pants. Man, is that, is that something that is a chronic issue in wrestling? Do you think people shitting their pants? Well, I mean, they've done just about everything else in ECW. Why wouldn't they have someone shit their pants? You know, one of my favorite pants shitting stories, I guess there's so many really. Yep. Uh, seeing punk shit his pants on SmackDown, but mm-hmm. maybe my favorite, most notorious is allegedly Sid shit his pants in the main event of WrestleMania 13 against the oh. undertaker. Uh-huh. Ricky Steamboat tells a hilarious story about Ric Flair shitting his pants early in a match wearing pink tights that turned to brown. Right. And they didn't want, uh, Flair was like, no, we're not going home early. These people paid to see a uh, time limit draw. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, so, Tom, so check out the Tommy Young tells it, tells that story too. Tommy does the, uh, the huge human being who just came to the ring is uh-huh. Harry Boatswain who was a 1991 draft pick who played five seasons for the 49ers, Eagles, and Jets. Uh, so this is, unfortunately, he passed away in, in 05 at just 36 years oh. old. But yeah. uh, he did actually play in the XFL as well for the Memphis Maniacs. But I just wanted everyone to have a, a frame of reference. He is uh, on the Philadelphia Eagles and uh, clearly a very large human being. And he's with Brian Pillman, who's calling out Joey Styles right now. And I love this look of Brian Pillman. This is probably his most iconic look and most beloved look. Like he just had a vibe around him. The silly cane was awesome. These type of uh, suits he was wearing, but those sunglasses, every time I see those sunglasses, they're synonymous with Brian Pillman for me. What do you think of this look for Brian? It's tremendous. He's just an absolute tremendous heel. Yes. I mean, don't you think he'll, he's one of the great heels of all time. I wouldn't go so far as to say one of the great heels of all time, but I loved this era. I mean, when I think of great heels of all time, I think of like Rick rude and Mr. Perfect and Tully Blanchard and guys like that. But Pillman, man, this, this run he was on here was so brief, but so fun and so good. I mean, let's appreciate, I don't mean for this to sound the way it does, but this guy's not with us 18 months later. Wow. I mean, 18 months uh, later. Who else is in the ring? Who's the guy with the suit and the the guy in the black? You know, I'm not sure. So why don't you just give them new fun names? Okay. He's calling himself the rogue horseman here and throwing up. The oh, the fingers. rogue horseman. Okay. So the guy in the suit is, um, in the black suit. What's his name? And a poo poo pants McCall. Okay, man. It's good okay. to see old poo poo here. Poo poo here. Okay. Uh, and the, the guy with his back to us. Yeah is bloody Dick Anderson. Wow. Bloody Dick Anderson. Was he related to Oli? Yeah. Uh, n- no, Oli wouldn't have anything for it. As a matter of fact, he's going to talk, right? Oh, he's, oh, he's pointing. I thought he was going to talk. He's pointing to Shane Douglas. He's in oh. the, that's the crow's nest right there. Uh, to the left okay. is Bob Ryder. And I think wow, to his right that? is Dave Shearer. It's Bob Ryder and Dave Shearer sitting together in the crow's nest. Yeah. You know what? Uh, God bless Bob Ryder. Do you have a lot of, uh, uh, fun times with Bob Ryder and WCW? Yeah. Bob was a good guy. You know, we did some, we started doing some post game stuff uh, online and I work with Bob, uh, doing what I, they just would bring me in now and then it didn't really, uh, Jeremy Borash and Bob did our post games, but Bob was just a good man. It's a good guy. Never heard a, a bad thing from Bob. He may have typed some bad shit. <laughs> I don't know, but he, uh, knows. Hey, there's another heel in this building. You know that? Who's the other heel? Coach Keith Morrison was in the building that night. Oh, really? As, as he tells us here on our comments page, uh, on the hard camera side. Wow. How about that? Wow. And, but we do understand that coach had to leave early because his mama said he had to get to bed <laughs> or he'd fall, he'd fall asleep right there. I love that, man. Right, there you go. You, you actually got to go to the ECW arena a few years ago for an autograph signing, right? I sure did. And you know, the, uh, the, 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 the years go by so quickly. I can't remember what year it was, but, uh, there's a picture that uh, Jr. and I took with Jimmy, uh, Jerry, the King Lawler and the rock and roll express. And that was a fun day. It really was, uh, to being at the old ECW arena. By the way, our, our pal and friend of the show, blue Meanie, 
is going to be doing Meanie Mania at his local watering hole in Philadelphia if you find yourself there this weekend. And he's even going to be giving a tour of the ECW arena. And you can actually, as I understand it, watch the big show uh, at the ECW arena. And I don't think they're charging admission. I think it's like a donation to a local charity. So be sure to check out the ECW arena at the corner of Swanson and Rittner. Blue Meanie's going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun, I'm sure. Blue Meanie, one of the good guys. You know, we uh, we have so many good guys in wrestling and, yes. and good girls. We really do. Some great people. Uh, this is probably not the, the right time to bring it up. I should have brought it up earlier, but I'm going to bring it up now. When I left the building on Saturday night, yeah. Jeff Jones gave me two cards that were filled with signatures of sympathy and how much they love me uh, from everybody backstage, wrestlers wow. and production people. And just, how awesome is that? It's just absolutely uh, just some, just to let you know how great these people are. So, so you know, the, uh, the balding fellow in the ring, that is the ECW founder. That's Todd Gordon. Oh, so, okay. so his show, his company. And of course, I think most people think of ECW and they think of Paul Heyman, but Todd Gordon actually hired Paul Heyman. And of course, eventually Paul took over and, but yeah. Todd Gordon's still, uh, still running his jewelry store there in Philadelphia. I'm sure he's going to be visiting wrestling fans. If you want to stop by and buy something, don't just stop by and ask for a picture and autograph, pick up something for your girlfriend, your wife, or both of them, uh, while you're there. Yeah. Uh, you know what, uh, tell me what that, that store is again. And I, I just might, are these, these the Harris boys? Yeah, they are with hair. How about that? Wow. And that Holy awesome smokes. <clears throat> I have, I, I put, uh, because we, 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 we can't track the sound up with the captioning on. And I saw, uh, that, uh, Joey styles was talking about the Harris brothers. And then I thought, huh, where are they? Oh, here's one of my favorite people of all time. Beulah McGillicuddy. Well, no, Tommy, I've never met Beulah. Beulah's obviously smoking hot, but if you don't like Tommy dreamer, boys, you don't like wrestling. He's just an easy, nice guy. I mean, yeah. if you have an opportunity to meet Tommy in real life, I encourage you to do that. If he's at WrestleCon, go by and see him. And you mentioned Todd Gordon's jewelry store. That's Carver Reed. So while you're there, it's R E E D, but Carver Reed is, okay. uh, is where you can find them. And, um, they're at one twenty one South 10th street at the corner of 10th and Samson streets. So, uh, Carver W okay. Reed is where you can go see Todd this weekend. If you post a picture of you and Todd Gordon, the internet's going to go bananas. Really? Yeah. Are you talking about the good people on the internet or the shitheads? The good people. Uh, okay. By the way, Todd has a fun book that our pal, Sean Oliver, uh, helped him write last year. I really enjoyed the book. I know it's been controversial in certain ECW circles, um, but I had fun with it. It was a fun read and, and, I, and I recommend it. Okay. I wanted to mention too, you were uh, asking and we had fun. Hey, who were those two guys in the ring with Brian Pillman? I don't know who they actually were. I probably should, but they were <clears throat> wink, wink his agent and his attorney because he's presenting or not pretending he is a big star and he's positioning himself as a heel that he's a big star. And the two fellows you see wrestling the, uh, the Harris boys here, those are the pit bulls. You've probably not seen much of their stuff. Have you? No, not at all. Uh, so that pit bull right there would actually get his neck broken. That's Gary Wolf. Oh God. And, uh, that fellow right there oh. who just went over the, the top, that's Anthony Durante and he's no longer with us. He passed away several years ago, but they were a big part of early ECW and their manager is a, uh, patent leather clad Francine. Whoa. From the OG days of what happened when you used to have a lot of fun pining after Francine. Yeah, man. I, you know what? I, that's, I haven't pined for her in a long time. Cause we haven't watched ECW in a long time, but hubba, hubba, hubba. Well, why don't Look you, uh, why don't you throw her a text and tell her to meet you at Tony Luke's for a cheesesteak? Oh, I'm not going to do that. People think I'm a uh, creep. Why for having lunch with a friend? <laughs> now, if you uh, reenact, look, look at the Howard Stern fan right there. Hawaiian shirt guy. 
Yeah. You're a char- right. cast of characters here in the front row with ECW all the time. Uh, they, they just, they just threw chairs at each other and didn't give a shit where they landed. Just did not give a shit to where they landed. You know, it's funny because when I look at some of this stuff from ECW, I can't help, but feel a little bit of a Memphis influence. Hmm. Holy shit. <laughs> right on his fucking forehead. Look at that guy holding a camera. Yeah. Or, or like going to go have film developed. <laughs> when was the last time you had film developed, Tony? Oh my God. Is there, is there, is there such a thing as film still? Can you imagine if there was like still a one hour photo place in your town? Oh. That'd be the best place to work. Cause ain't nobody fucking bothering you <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Wouldn't be cool to own it. It'd be great to work there. (laughs) Fans are like, I I, met some of them are happy to be close to it. Some of them are scared to fucking death. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there went a fan. Tony. I, uh, (laughs) I love watching this old ECW. I mean, Oh, get him again. (laughs) Hit him a third time. What the fuck? Come on. There you go. Fans say, take this chair. Here's one. Here's one. Oh, man. You know, years later, maybe not even that long, but eventually Atlas security would be everywhere, but I don't see a bunch of Atlas security right now. No, I don't either. And you know, uh, Atlas security, uh, brought us Sam Hemingway, one of the greatest guys Truly one of the greatest guys I've ever been around in my life. Great guy. And I mean, there's a few members. I mean, I know we probably shouldn't be talking about this, but there's a few members of the old Atlas crew on the ECW team now. On the AW team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think uh Shane is one of them. Maybe yeah, that's I'm exactly sure. right. Look at that. Do you see that? A super yeah. power bomb on one of the Harris boys. Yep. The Harris boys are not exactly little fellows. So to power mm-hmm. bomb one of them big some bitches off the top rope is quite a feat. Comes the meanie, and I believe that's Stevie in there with him, right? Stevie Richards? Incorrect. Those are the fabulous Incorrect. ones. Okay. Now, of course, it's Blue Meanie and, oh. and Stevie yeah. Richards, but they were doing a lot of parody acts here. And in this era, they were parodying the fabulous ones. Look at that. <laughs> Stevie kick on Francine. Damn you, Stevie. Damn you. Couldn't get away with that today. And shouldn't have done it then. And can I tell you what, uh, I ever tell you what Lois called this. You were the pulling the guy that coming out. Oh, Tommy dreamer Tommy with one arm. Yeah. And I thought I was going to be able to call that move. What, what was it? When, when they grab the legs, right. Yeah, and yeah. pull him to the, it's called the Dick remover. Oh, is that, that's what Lois named it. George Lois called it. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I do too. That's the dick remover. You know, something else that Lois said to me once we were, believe it or not, as crazy as this is, we were at the hospital years ago when Ric Flair was in the hospital, as you recall. Mm-hmm. Right. And Lois was there and she was talking about how she used to, uh, cut up with Rick mm-hmm. and they would make fun. Um, uh, and I don't even know what this means, but she used the phrase. Maybe you can translate Lois speak for me. What is a pussy hat? Do you know what that means? Cause she said it and I just had to nod along and I was like, I don't want to say, I don't know what that means, but I really legitimately don't have any idea what that means. Uh, what is a pussy hat, Tony? I know what a pussy I, cat is. It's the opposite of a dog. I'm not a cat person. I'm a dog person, but hat. It's probably just a term that, uh, that flair hit her with, uh, knowing that, uh, she would go around asking people that question. He really, really plays the dumb broad role very well. Okay. All I can say. And in real life, she's very, very intelligent, very intelligent, so intelligent. 
that she could probably just probably just survive on her own one day. Uh, boy, they are just look at what's going on here. It's just, it's just, you know what I've discovered. I, I guess I knew this all along. Is that fuck the matches here? Right, right. Just come out and beat the fuck out of somebody. Somebody else run in. You know, they Pillman ran in and disrupted the first match. Uh, here comes Tommy Dreamer, uh, and he disrupts this match along with the fabulous one and the Harris's. What do you think of the uh, midriff shirts and uh, Daisy Dukes? You in on that? Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, but not on Blue Meanie. Look at that. Yikes. Yeah, so uh, ECW, man, we're uh, about 20 minutes into the program so far. And Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I like the look and feel of this show. I I know that you would probably say it's too dark, but I actually like that it feels dark and underground and black posts and black ropes and black walls and lots of fans wearing black T-shirt. And the pussy hats are everywhere, whatever that means. Are everywhere, yeah. Well, Tommy was going to leave, and now the fans say go back in there. So, of course, we saw him uh, ahead of time. He was uh, he had his arm in a sling, in that right. little promo, and he came out with one arm covered up by the jacket, one arm through the jacket, and then took it off and got to getting it. How about this Taz? But well, what do you think he's saying right here? Shivani should not even be on the broadcast team. Because I am a broadcast professional. I may be the greatest. Well, I am the greatest commentator of all time. I've done WrestleManias. How about you, Siobhan? Don't think so. (laughs) Did you hear the other week? And I think it was on the... Don Callis came out. It was probably out for the... uh, Oh, God. Uh, It was the Swerve Strickland match. That's what it was. Swerve against... uh, Takeshita? How about Takeshita? Is he not a performer or what? Unbelievable. Oh, God. Jeez, what a what a performer. And of course, <clears throat> uh, I hate to say this, but because they'll say, oh, he's uh overhyping it. Will Ospreay may be the the best performer I've ever seen in my life. And that's I've seen a lot of great performers. I haven't seen enough of him yet to be able to call it. Him definitely that, but he may be. And I'll talk about it in a moment because right now, if you're watching along with us, you're seeing one of the great performers, actually two of the great performers ever ahead of their time, Ray Mysterio and Juventud. Yeah, and they're showing you clips from one of their prior meetings, and we're about to see a rematch, two out of three falls. Man, just think about how revolutionary Ray Mysterio was for professional wrestling. You're seeing Ray before he's in WCW. Right. You're also going to see a young Chris Jericho on the next episode. We're going to watch right after this one before he goes Mm. to WCW. Right. So this was like 96, 97, 97, I guess. March of 96, just before Jericho went, just before, uh, Ray went, Hooventud went. Right. Cactus went, I mean, and of course, like guys like Shane Douglas, he's fresh off of the Dean Douglas run, which was just abysmal in the WWF. But at this point we had seen Shane in the WWF twice. And of course he's even had a, a stint with WCW part of the dynamic dudes. And then that pretty impressive run with Ricky steamboat. All right. So let, let me, as we're watching this, let me go back to the Taz story yes. because it, uh, I don't know why I said this, but if you watch Takeshita against Swerve Strickland, I, we had Don Callis with us. And I always love Don Callis being with us because I consider Don one of my good friends in wrestling. And uh, isn't it weird that when we first started this, I didn't even know Don Callis. I yes. called him Don Calais. Yes. I didn't, even know, I didn't even know Chris Hero. And now I consider Chris Hero and Don Callis two of my good friends in wrestling. Anyway. So Don is beside me and I love when Don, because it just gets me in one of those silly moods. Uh, 
and there was a kind of a, a, a crazy pin. And I said, well, that pin really something to the fact of that he didn't really get him good. And that's why he kicked out. And Taz said, well, Shivani, actually the pin was pretty good. And he was talking about it. And I went, yeah, 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 Taz, we got it. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Yeah, 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 Taz, we got it. And buddy, that lit a fire to his ass. I love it. He goes, you need to go back and listen to it. He said, Shivani, tell me how many wrestling matches you've had in your life. <laughs> and I was thinking as he said that, oh shit, I really got him pissed off because, you know, we, we go back and forth. Uh, but, uh, that was, that was a lot of fun that night. That was, there were, that was that night. I think that we laughed so hard, uh, during the commercial break that, uh, one of the fans said, Hey, Shivani, you and Taz need to get serious out here. <laughs> I'm thinking, Fuck you, dude. We're having a great time during the commercial break. Uh, but I really got him pissed off that time. So go back and listen to that. It's worth a listen. How did the fan in the crowd know what y'all were saying? Uh, they, they were, they saw us laughing. Oh, I got you. During the commercial break. Cause we were just laughing like hell about something. Um, but I mean, we're right there now, you know, we're right at the, uh, right. Well, at the broadcast position. Well, you Taz and, uh, Excalibur were all recently featured on botchamania. You know that? Oh, really? No, really. What did we do? Well, you, you guys are on there all the time. But most recently, uh, -huh. uh, I forget exactly what it was, but somebody said something that made the other person laugh that made the other person laugh. And uh -huh. then you guys could not contain your laughter, but you threw it to a backstage interview and they didn't turn your mics off just yet. And you could hear okay. all three of you holding it in. And then once you thought you were clear, you started laughing, but it still came through and oh, it was fantastic. Okay. Yeah. You know what? We have fun. God, we have fun. By the way, um, a little pro tip. I, if you want to be a part of that fun, go ahead and sign up with fight. Or I guess it's called Triller TV. Now that's the way the rest right. of the world can watch these, uh, live dynamites before it airs in their part of the world. They can actually see it there. But what's cool about that is it means when here in America, the feed goes to a commercial, it does not go to a commercial on Triller TV. And the result is. You guys talk about things that you would never normally talk about on the regular broadcast. And it's hilarious. I've, I heard one person say, uh, to me, uh, that, and this was uh, not a person who was in charge. One person said, you know, that's the time where you should sell international and, and they're right. Uh, but we get away with a lot of stuff because just Tony lets us get away with a lot of stuff. And a lot of times Tony, you know, is during those commercial breaks is working on timing the next segment or whatever. Um, but, uh, we would never say stuff like that on normally on, on the TV, real feed yeah. uh, on TV, but yeah, we get away with a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff. We have a lot of fun. Um, going to be having fun yeah. as you're listening to this tonight, Worcester, Massachusetts tickets on sale, at EWTIX.com. young bucks going to be taking on best friends. The finals will, uh, or to go to the finals of the. Uh, tag team tournament. And we also got powerhouse Hobbs and will Osprey in a battle of the wheels. We mentioned that contract signing. We mentioned Jericho calling out hook daddy ass taking on Jay white. Probably going to be some story there. If I had to guess and thunder Rosa back in action against, uh, one of your favorites, Mrs. May, man, yeah. this is, uh, it's going to be a fun show and it's happening tonight on AEW. But if you're in the area, if you're in Boston or you're in uh, Worcester, Go see them. A E W T I X dot com. Worcester. That's Worcester. Uh, we, we, uh, we talked about that the other night. Apparently, uh, Bobby Cruz, another great guy told me after the show, he said, uh, someone sent online for Ian to tell you, uh, explain to you how to pronounce Worcester. I said, did I say it right? He said, it's Worcester. I said, I thought that's what I said. He said, no, you didn't say it that way. So when I did my, uh, my control center, which I did this morning, the leads this morning, and, uh, you're going to see it, uh, drop tomorrow. I put in the teleprompter copy W U S S T E R. So I would say it right. It's Worcester. So Bobby told me how to say it right. We're seeing yet another match from, uh, 
Yeah. So this we saw a, a recap match. of their previous match. And now this is the actual two out of three falls match. And sometimes gotcha. you and I like to watch old bad wrestling and make fun of it. This is not it. These are two no. very young guys. Absolutely tearing it up. Do you want to just take a guess how old Ray Mysterio is right here? 20 years old, 21. Isn't that wild that this guy is that good, that young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm so impressed with him. He's, he's 21. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. But it's just amazing that he's this good this early. Yeah. Yeah. He was, I mean, he was obviously ahead of his time. Yes. Just, and the moves here on the outside, if you're watching along with us are so dangerous for many reasons. Because there's no padding on the floor. Also because the safety rail is right up, almost right up against the ring. Yes. So if you, if you do a move like that, you're, you're definitely going to hit the safety. No way around it. Right. By the way, not to be, uh, overshadowed by Ray Mysterio, Hooventud also yeah. 21 years old. You know, he's a very, very handsome man. When you take that mask off, both of them are very handsome. The juice. They call this extreme up. Lucha Libre and you know, the ECW sort of had a reputation for appreciating really, really good wrestling. And I know that sometimes people would paint it with a really broad brush and say, oh, it's just blood and guts and people bleed in every match. And well, yes, it did have some blood and guts and yes, they did brawl through the crowd sometimes. And yes, there were unprotected chair shots in some of the matches. But you also got stuff like this and, and respectfully, you didn't see anything like this in the WWF or WCW at this point in 1996. Right. You know, and I think, uh, you're onto something when you said there was a, a, a big, heavy ECW influence in AEW because for better or worse, I mean, this is a place that when I was a kid, like for my senior trip, some of my friends went to. Mexico, I went to the corner of Swanson and Rittner. I wanted to see an ECW show. And I understand that Tony Khan had his dad bring him to a show. And I know fans yes. have actually gone back and found Tony in the crowd wearing an, an orange Taz t-shirt sitting on those bleachers across from the hard cam. And you know, this sort of wrestling, which was, uh, the brainchild of, of Paul Heyman was designed to cater to the super quote unquote, smart, hardcore fan. And I think you could probably say the exact same thing about AEW today, which is why, you know, guys like Will Ospreay and, and, and Okada come over to AEW and, and do the, the type of performances they do. Yeah. I agree with everything you say. Uh, I, I think you, I think we're right on that. And I find it very interesting that you would mention Paul Heyman's name and catering in the same sentence. Did uh, I say, take did a I look. Say, oh, I did. I didn't mean it like yeah. that, but yeah. Okay. Take a look. What? I don't mean to cut you off. I was just taking a look at, uh, again, this is a, they've already had a pin. Uh, they may have had two pinfalls so far, but it, it's one of the things that made these two guys great was their seemingly endless energy. Yes. It, it seemed like the match would go on and on and on and on. And they were still in phenomenal shape. I know you can see Ray's breathing heavy here, but their energy and they just, they didn't slow down at all. Um, listen, it, it's, it's just common. It's, uh, logical that guys, when they wrestle, they continue to just lose something, right? You're not the same wrestler when the bell rings as you were at the end of, especially like a 20, 25 minute match. But you look at these guys, you're thinking the bell just rung. Just, just absolutely amazing athletes. Cardiovascular training, just amazing. It really is. Now, let's see. Coach Keith is right over here, this side somewhere. And I don't see him anywhere. Well, let's see if there's anybody asleep. Uh, there's not. Well, we know you're there, Coach Keith. And we appreciate you always being here with us in the mornings when we record this broadcast, this podcast. Isn't it interesting, you know, a friend of mine, when I first started watching ECW, 
I was in high school and I was telling my buddies about it and they started to watch it. And one of my friends at school said, Hey, why do they have referees? And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, you can't get disqualified. I mean, guys come to the ring, smoking cigarettes and drinking beers and hitting people with canes and nobody gets disqualified. Mm -hmm. And there was even a referee. There was a spot once and towards the end of 96 where a ref gave one of their other wrestlers a DDT. (laughs) And he's like, so why are they there? And I go, I don't don't think we're supposed to ask questions. Yeah. I think we're just supposed to enjoy the show and not think too much about it. And I know that that's been an issue at different times in wrestling where people would say, well, that wasn't make any logical sense. And it's like, what about wrestling makes any fucking logical sense anyway? Mm. Yeah. If you're looking for logic, go do another sport, go, go watch politics, go watch political debate. Yeah. See if you can find yeah, any or, there either. Yeah. yeah. Go watch the NBA or watch college basketball and see all the fights that they're having and see what's logical about that. Well, it's funny you say watch basketball because you know, Alabama somehow, some way is in the final four. I can't believe that's the thing, but we yeah. were actually watching the other day and my mom was watching with me. Uh, dad was supposed to be, but dad fell asleep on the couch. So we're watching and one of the Bama players went set up to take a charge. And mom says, uh-huh. no, look at this silly shit. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, that boy just fell over. He didn't get knocked down. And I go, yeah, mom, he was taking a foul. She goes, well, it looks stupid. Why would he do that? Why wouldn't he just try to block the shot? I said, well, they got the ball back. It drew a foul. It's the right way to do it. She goes, so in basketball, you just pretend to fall too. And I go, yeah. She goes, does every sport you watch have people pretending to fall? I go, well, that's <laughs> actually a fair question, mom. But yeah, he, he did that on purpose. Yeah. Well, do you watch soccer? Shit, because no. they pretend to fall there too. <laughs> they pretend to fall in everything. Yeah. Uh, of course they do. And, um, uh, yeah, your mom was right. I think it's interesting. I think it says a lot about the Alabama fan, your dad. He would never sleep, would never sleep if Alabama football had a chance to go to the national championship No, during the game. No. But he was asleep dur- during one of the biggest basketball games ever for Alabama. Maybe the biggest, right? It was the biggest, yes. The first yeah. ever appearance for Alabama mm-hmm. in the Final Four. Yeah, uh, He was awake at the end, of course. Yeah, uh, But there during the game... He just got comfortable on that couch. And after he'd been in the sun all day, Lord, he was no match for that couch. Moving to pull the safety rail towards the ring. So he could just jump moonsault. right in the crowd, right in the crowd. Uh, can you imagine like, it's really weird to think about. And I know there were a handful of lawsuits, but you would think that this would be more litigious. Oh yeah. A couple of fans sued. Uh, you know, they, 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 uh, decided once upon a time, we're going to hit somebody with a flaming chair. And you might be asking mm-hmm. yourself, how do you get a chair to catch on fire? Well, you tie a towel around it, you douse it in kerosene, and then you light it up. But guess mm-hmm. what? When you go to swing it, uh, well, the fire has burned through the rag. So it's no longer holding on and it just goes a flying. Mm. So if you send flaming things into the crowd, they don't like that. You see. Yeah, I can, I can see that, but I can also see if you go, if you're familiar with what's going on here, I can also see that you are, have to realize that you may be a part of it. Well, I, I think know. that's why you go because you want to be a part of it. I think. And the, then of course, pe- again, people probably sue just, they're looking for the, win the lottery, look at that and then bomb off. It's, it's so, uh, again, now they're taking a little break here to catch their breath, but when they go back to wrestling, it's so fluid and so fast and just, um, it's like, light, it's I, like the lighter guys in boxing, you know, the bantam weights yes, and the fly right, weights. Right. And I mean, they're just pop, 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 yeah. pop, pop, nonstop compared to a more lumbering heavyweight bout. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? A press fall away slam. If you're not watching with us right now, it it would behoove you to go watch this on your own. So far ahead of its time, Tony, what we're watching is nearly 30 years old. Wow. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, cause this match, if they aired it on dynamite, people would eat it up. 
Yo, know, but my it was God. 30 years ago. Yeah. People would be chanting, this is awesome. Fight A-E-Dub. forever. A-E-Dub. Yeah. A E dub. A E dub. Like that. Yeah, when I was a kid, I was such an ECW fan. My friends and I, we were such goofs. But if anything like fell, like, you know, you've been in a restaurant before and maybe one of the servers drops a tray and the glasses break and you know, the, some plates break and all that jazz. Some of my numbskull friends would start an ECW chant in the restaurant <laughs> because these fans are so Pavlovian with there's a big table spot immediately. ECW, ECW. Yeah. I'd love to let you hear some of that, but, uh, Tony and I got enough cease and desist orders from WWE that we can no longer track any audio from the Peacock mm-hmm. network. So if you're wondering why you're not hearing that ECW chant right now, cause that's what they're doing. Well, yeah. now you know why. And that's a shame too, to be honest with you, because I, I think just an opinion here, I think you and I have helped draw attention to a lot of the stuff on the network. Why Bruce is back with WWE, bud. Yeah. I mean, uh, they gave and- him, they gave us a show on the network. Because we could right. steer enough people there, but you know, there's regime changes and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand doing and whatever nameless faceless okay. lawyer he doesn't, but this is one of the more right. iconic moments in ECW arena history. They're outside at the corner of Swanson and Rittner, moving to setting up the power bomb onto the hood of a car right in front of the building. Mm. This feels flash- different. Yeah. Can you imagine comparing this to like a Monday night raw? It's not comparable. <laughs> Hurricane Rana off the car onto the concrete back through the front door. We go, by the way, the building looks nothing like this anymore, but right. you can still see, you know, if you take the tour with blue meanie, he'll be sure to mention this is where that was. That's where this was. Blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Is this, uh, the building now, the ECW arena, what, what do they, oh, Jesus, <laughs> what do they use it for now? Uh, boxing and, uh, they, they literally, literally have bingo there. Um, okay. I mean, they do lots of community events. Like I'm not saying this to be funny. People have their bar mitzvahs. there. Does not surprise me. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, but like stardom, stardom's running there this weekend and they have MMA and there's lots of stuff. I, I think they're even, they got guys who are, uh, you know, uh, dick dancers, they're going to be slinging that wiener around in August. There. Oh. Look at this. He was going for a splash mountain, AKA a razor's edge off the top rope, turns it into a hurricane rata. That's it. Ray Mysterio gets the pinfall, wins the match. Two out of three falls, raise your winner. What a barn burner match that was Tony. What'd you think? It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, now he set up a table and he hasn't used the table yet, but apparently he's getting ready to. Yeah. I mean, this this, this yeah. is the closing moment of the match right here. I mean, of course the match is over, but check this out. Right. Power bomb mm-hmm. through the table. Oh my God. From Joey styles. And you see those arms moving. So you know what they're chanting. It's amazing. What, what Paul built here. I mean, this cult like following. Yeah, why not? Throw a chair at his head just for good measure. Yeah. Wow. And and now you're going to get one of my favorite moments here. The ECW fan of the week is WCW slash TBS attorney Gary Juster. According to Brian Pillman, sure can write a contract. So for being this week's extreme fan, you'll receive compliments of us, a free meal at a fine culinary establishment where the ECW chef cam is now there to document Mr. Juster's meal preparation. Now, of course, Gary Juster was not actually a WCW attorney, but here's Brian Pillman in the kitchen saying, I guess Bischoff thinks I'm a dumb jock. That really burns me up. He gets the big flame. And from off camera, someone yells, Jeff Pillman, the Juster's table is waiting for their salad. Brian Pillman picks up the uh, salad. Hawks a loogie right in it. (laughs) Courtesy of Chef Pillman. <laughs> As you may recall, in real life, <laughs> he got uh, Eric Bischoff to give him his release. He is huh. not going to be showing up for Uncensored 
Uh-huh. And of course, Bischoff thought this was supposed to be a little gag. Nope. You sent me a real release. So I'm really released. Thanks a lot. Uh-huh. Gary Juster. Wow. Here's Shane Douglas with a, uh, I think it's a, uh, soap opera star from one life uh-huh. to live or whatever the shit that was some sort of charity function. But they, this was, uh, a lot of people called it the pulp fiction ending, but they would play that miserly and they're going to give a little credit at the end and just cut from promo to promo vignette to vignette for all the different talent. One of my favorite parts of the ECW show, you see Missy Hyatt digging her nails into the Sandman's back there. He's Ooh. calling herself mommy and you know what mommy wants mommy gets and a l- little innuendo Ooh. there. Maybe. Oh, the headhunters, AKA uh, tan Dave Silva and Conrad Thompson are here, but not for long. <laughs> Who's the guy in the, who, who are the other two? Think, uh, I think that's peaches on the right. Now this is JT Smith. He uh-huh. was pretending to be Italian. You see, he's a member of the FBI. He would tell everybody he's full blooded, but he mm-hmm. famously has had a couple of missteps, a couple of botches. And he's saying, you think I'm uh, clumsy, but I'm really not. I'm just, uh, a really smart Italiano. And, uh, now we've got the eliminators here. They just hit the eliminator on, or the total elimination finishing move on Francine, which is why when Stevie kicked her, she had mm-hmm. a neck brace on. Right. And Perry Saturn's line right there was my only regret is that we didn't get to do it to Beulah since she's pregnant. We could have got a two for one. <sighs> oh, really? Yes. Oh, Missy Hyatt again, digging those mm-hmm. fingernails in the Sandman. Mm-hmm. Good use of Missy here, you know, an established WCW character, no longer with WCW. The audience knows who she is. You can just knock out a couple of vignettes and leverage her, uh, her fandom. Mm. I think she and Bischoff had problems. Uh, they did. Yeah. Uh, what I remember. Oh, this is a uh, new Jack, a new Jack on the right. Mustafa, yeah. his tag team partner in the gangsters on the left. Mustafa, maybe most famously, once smoked pencil shavings. Oh, really? Know what you're thinking? Who smokes pencil shaving? Ah, Mustafa. People want, yeah, people who want lead poisoning. That's exactly right. Thank you very much. So that's Raven, and to his left there, or our left, his right, is Kamono Wanalea, who oh. years later, as I understand it, would be a part of WCW and Jimmy Hart's girlfriend, which seems like. Yeah. Uh, those words should not touch, but they did. Yeah. Leia meow, but she was called in, uh, WCW. Now he's referencing being clumsy again and take a look. What's going to happen. Old JT here. The set <laughs> falls down and hits him in the head. <laughs> yeah. Well, so now we're going into we- a restaurant and okay. the, the restaurant owner is going to tell us, Hey, the restaurant's closed tonight. And the cameraman says, no, I'm here to take Brian Pillman. So we're going to go over and see Brian Pillman eating alone in a restaurant, which if you follow Paul Heyman on social, you know, was a Paul Heyman thing. He loves to eat alone in a restaurant. Uh And here comes the chef or one of the waiters rather asking for an autograph. And Brian Pillman asks who you want it to and signs the autograph. One of my favorite things right here, Tony, at the very end of the segment, as we're going off the uh, show, he says, you seem like a very nice guy. And Pillman says it's a work, you know, I'm not really the loose cannon. That's just their perception. And he starts stabbing himself with a fork. Isn't that great? It is great. It's a work, you know, just set it right on the show. Oh, you know, if after he stabbed himself with uh, that fork, it makes me wonder. You think he needed a little pain relief? Cause if he did, I'd love to tell him to go to the amazing kind.com. That's where he could find plant-based pain relief balms. You can get creams and gels for your muscles and joints, and even the infused oils for mood support and sleep. It's all at the amazing kind.com and you can hook it up with 20% off. That's right. 20% off all orders at the amazing kind.com. When you use our promo code wrestle, your body will thank you. The founder of the amazing kind.com used to work in the wrestling business. He was a producer and editor at the WWE working on their commercials and marketing. 
And now he's decided to pursue his passion, the amazing kind.com. It's a family run business that specializes in plant-based plant or plant-based palm uh, pain relief. I'll get it right. Here's the, the cool thing about this. This is good for what ails you. You just rub it right on the affected area. I know that sounds simple, but that's what it is. My wife just recently did a fitness competition and man, she was hurting for certain after super sore. We knew what to do. We pulled out the bombs from the amazing kind, put it on the affected areas. And dude, she had an immense recovery because of this. Like they were telling her it might be 10 days before she was feeling back to normal three or four days. And she was good to go. The amazing kind gave her the hot tag and they can hook you up too. It's great for sore muscles. It's great for stiff joints. It's great for back aches and arthritis. Maybe you've just spent a long day on your feet and need some everyday comfort. Well, these topicals can hook you up, man. You're going to love these CBD products. The CBD infused oil can help you reduce your anxiety and help you relax. It can also help you focus if you're using their CBG infused oil and the CBN can even help you sleep. But what my wife really liked is the CBD topicals. Yes, it can help you with your muscles and joint pain, but it can even help with specific skin conditions. And you're going to see it has like an anti-inflammatory agent. So wherever you're hurting, man, even like skin irritation, it can help. But the, the post-workout soreness and reducing muscle tension, it was a game changer for my wife. And you're going to love it. I really, really recommend that you try it. It's great for people who have chronic pain, people who have migraines, people who have headaches. Even if you're trying to do a massage, do it with the CBD topical. Just massage it right in. The Amazing Kind has all of this, and you can get a fantastic deal. 20% off when you use our promo code WRESTLE. That's theamazingkind.com, theamazingkind.com. Be sure to use the promo code WRESTLE, and you'll get 20% off. And Tony, we're not done. we got 46 minutes of ECW goodness here. We're going to pick up where we left off. It's March 25th, 1996. We're going to watch the very next consecutive episode. And we'll be talking about big ass extreme bash here in three, two, one play. And we're seeing a uh, house show footage here. The ECW fan cam. This was shot back in the day, probably by Doug Gentry worked for rfvideo.com. And they would actually go out and film all of the house shows. And then sell them on a VHS. So if you went to this show and you wanted to have a tape of it, you could actually order, which I thought was pretty awesome. Imagine if they had Jim Crockett promotions, house shows on tape that you could go buy, Tony, how great would that have been? Wouldn't that be tremendous? Yes. I think I told you the story that in the Jim Crockett promotion days, they would put a camera like in like Greensboro or Charlotte, one of the big venues and would show footage of a title change or something like that. And you knew when the, we would go to Greensboro and we would look up in, uh, in the concourse area from where we were, we were always ringside. If we saw a camera up there, okay, we thought something big's going to happen. Something big's going to happen. There's a camera, but yeah, you're right. Footage from a house show would have been, you know, I just, I don't think sometimes, and this, this season, this even happens today. Sometimes the world of wrestling and putting together television shows goes so quickly because you've got to put together one weekly. And now for us, it's two weeks, three weekly, right? But I think it goes so fast. Sometimes we do not stand. We just not take the moment to slow down and think about, Hey, what else can we do? Right? What else can we do? And I think back then, if we'd have sat down, we'd have thought, Hey, why don't we, I don't re-record the house shows and sell them on VHS. Right. No, uh, wouldn't that have been a good idea? Um, and I, and I think that sometimes that there's so much more that we can do in pro wrestling today. Yes. With the inter with the internet that we just don't take the time to think about it. And you know, I've got my week, my week is, and here's the great Joey styles talking right now. Uh, my week is, uh, let, let's just start on Monday. Monday, there's uh, doing the control centers and uh, also doing some voiceovers on internet. And then Tuesdays, I've got this. And Wednesdays, I'm traveling. Uh, and Thursdays, I'm traveling. And also Thursdays, I'm writing copy. And then on uh, 
On Friday, I'm recording another control center. And then I travel on Saturday mornings and I'm back on Sunday. And by the time I get back on Sunday, I ain't worth fuck. And uh, I do a lot of sleeping on Sundays. Uh, so my week goes by. I got so much that goes, goes by so fast. Sometimes I ought to just stop and say, okay, fuck this. Let's come up with something different. Right. Come up with an idea. And it's just not done. We don't do enough of that. I think they were they were doing a lot of that back then. And, uh, oh, here's Cactus Jack. This is his last. Uh, Bob Ortiz is the ring announcer. And he's announcing okay. to the crowd, making his final appearance in the ECW arena, Cactus Jack. And, I man, the entire thing. crowd gives him a standing yeah. ovation. Yeah. Mikey Whipwreck, of course, was his tag team partner. They won the uh, ECW tag team titles together here in ECW. His final match is going to be against Mikey Whipwreck. And the crowd is chanting for Jack. It's pretty cool. The uh, respect that these hardcore fans have for cactus Jack. Now they're not going to show the full match here, Tony, because they're trying to get you to order the VHS because this is uh before ECW has pay-per-views. So they would mm -hmm. run these shows that was like a pay-per-view and that they would name it, and put together a big card and they would promote it. But really once the 1100 seats or whatever it was in the ECW arena was sold out, they would just sell the VHS. And so they would run commercials during the TV, watch the unedited entire show. When you send a check to this address, blah, blah, blah. And we just saw Mikey Whipwreck go sailing over the top rope onto the table and bounce off of it. Yes. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mikey, uh, obviously worked for, uh, eight, uh, God, that table won't break, dude. No, that, that, uh, that's the botchamania. I am the table table. So Mikey obviously has worked for WCW, got to work with him a little bit there. And he's also now known as, uh, and has been known as a pretty good trainer. Yes. As well. That's the SATs. Hmm. Yeah. Big, big, uh, big match here for Mikey Whipwreck in his career, because he's wrestling an already beloved legend and cactus is wearing a shirt that says on the back, bang, bang, he's dead because this is really what he thought was going to be his last time wrestling as cactus Jack. Like, yes, he signed the WWF deal, but they understood. I'm not going to get to keep that name. They're going to do something else with me. He knows what the mask looks like. He knows all of that jazz. He's going to debut the, the Monday night raw after uh, WrestleMania. So it's all lined up for him to go do that, but he's still out here taking all these brutal chair shots and all this punishment. All the while, he's got a signed contract with the WWE. It's pretty wild. Yeah. He took five chair shots to the head there. Yes. You, can, you can't tell me. Can't tell me he didn't have a concussion. And a suplex on the floor. Like, I mean, he's... I'm just saying, normally when a guy gets a big contract like this, especially in this era, yeah. to go work with the WWF, because it's not yeah. guaranteed money. All he's guaranteed is an opportunity. You right. damn sure don't go you know, damn the torpedoes and risk injury before you have a chance yeah. to make your first impression. No, no, the boss, no. unless you're cactus Jack, unless you're cactus Jack. And then it's just what you do. That's what you do. Oh man. Matter of fact, I think he's wearing his mankind boots right there. Wow. I loved his old, uh, leopard boots. Yeah. In a, in a fucking category by himself. Really? No doubt. Hey, what do you make of, uh, him talking about teasing, thinking about doing one last match for his uh, 60th birthday next year? Well, I think he's crazy, but I've always thought that. Yeah. But yeah, I would, uh, I would like to be there to see that be on hand, not be a part of the show, but just be on hand to see it honor him. I, for one, think it would be cool if his last match was in the ECW arena. Yeah. I mean, so uh, he, he is, uh, teasing or he's talking about that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's really going to do it. I mean, I think right. he he's explained, uh, that, that he, he needs motivation to, to drop some weight and get in better shape and the yeah. motivation can't just be to look better or feel better. Yes. That is the goal at the end. He could drop weight and get, get himself motivated and focused on wrestling. So if he was going to come back for quote unquote, one last match, 
get himself and uh, motivated to get in shape to do that. You know, when you, when you stop and you think about uh, how I am tied to Cactus Jack and the famous butts and seats uh, comment, when I think about it now, the years and years gone by, uh, at first I was kind of pissed off that, that that's all the fans would, not all, but a lot of fans talked about it. But then I got to thinking, you know what? Uh, it was memorable. And Cactus talks now about how I helped his career. Thank you very much, he said. Got people to watch it. Uh, I feel now after all these years, very proud that I'm tied to him in some way. That's awesome. Also the, the same way that I'm very proud. I'm tied to Ric Flair and the horseman and dusty by holding their microphone. And that's why if cactus Jack has a final match, I would love to be in the stands to watch it just to show my admiration. for. Him. Uh, you'd put, you'd put your butt in a seat. See him one last I time. I put my butt in a seat. Absolutely. And I'd sign a, I'd sign a book. <laughs> I love that. Listen, the uh, rumor in innuendo is that uh, last report, he's lost like 25 pounds already. I wow. Think, I think he was trying to um, drop 100 pounds, get down around there. Yeah. So he's a quarter of the way there already. It's not easy, brother. I mean, I'm down in a year 37 pounds. And right now I am stuck at 208. I am stuck at 208. What's the so, goal? Do you uh, have a goal? Yeah, I want to lose 50 pounds. I want to lose another 13, which would get me down to around 197 or something around, just under 200. That's my goal. You'll love that. But you know what? Okay. He's giving a big speech here. This is his farewell speech. And okay. he's thanking everybody. By the way, his theme song that night was New York, New York. Frank oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Cause he's going to work in quote unquote, New York, but he's doing uh -huh. a promo right now saying, listen, I got to acknowledge the two guys in the back who made all this possible. One is a creative genius. And the other is a visionary. He had a vision for what he wanted to put together. And now it's all coming through. It's all coming. It's all here. And everything I've done here is because of these two guys. And I want to acknowledge them ladies and gentlemen. The heartbreak kid, Stevie Richards and the blue man. So of course, everyone thought he was teasing Todd Gordon and Paul Heyman, not actually right. it's blue Manny and Stevie Richards, <laughs> which I just think is great. Yeah, it is. Todd, the blue Manny. Now they're huh? doing the Rockettes cause he's going to New York. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. That's so good. <laughs> that is so good. And he's going to, uh, announce that for his final ECW appearance here at the ECW arena, he wants to strut out of the arena. And of course, the reason he's doing that is because we've seen blue Manny and, uh, Stevie Richards do the Fargo strut right. as part of their, you know, I don't know, homage yeah. to the fabulous ones. Right. So. You're about to see it. Mick Foley strutting and cutting as Cactus Jack alongside Blue Media and Stevie Richards out of the <laughs> ECW so arena. That is so freaking cool, isn't it? How do you not love Mick Foley, man? Oh, God. Some fan brought him flowers. And now we're just seeing some highlights from his time in ECW so you can appreciate all that he's done. Big uh -huh. flying cheer on Sabu, winning the tag straps from Public Enemy along with uh, Mikey Whipwreck. Some really crazy stuff, including that unbelievable series of beer bottle shots, which I don't think they show here. And of course we had the Terry Funk flaming chair. We're not going to show that either, but we do get a little Terry Funk action. Right. How about the no rope barbed wire with Sandman there? No, thank you. Uh, look at it. Look at him. Just he, he fell right into it and made sure he, he got, he dug into it too. Okay. And you see the, uh, the fonts coming across the screen here, 1985 <laughs> to 1996, bang, bang. He's dead. Wow. Pretty crazy, man. But that's it for Mick Foley and cactus Jack in ECW. Nice mm -hmm. little way for uh Heyman to, to send him off. You know, once upon a time fans would chant 
you sold out and things like that when guys would take a contract. But I thought it was cool that Heyman had enough respect for Cactus to let him leave his way. Yeah. And then again, I get the fans in a way. It disappoints me when they say you sold out. What are they doing? They, they're booing a the guy because he's making more money for his family. What the fuck? Oh, here comes. Look at this young, this young Lionheart. Lionheart Chris Jericho wearing similar tights to what we've seen him wear in his feud with Hook. And he's about to be facing Hook's dad here, Taz. And Joey Styles was really introducing Chris Jericho to the audience, saying he's going to take everything he's learned in the dungeon with the, the Hart family and, and the, the Hart wow. brothers and everything he's learned from Chris Benoit and Brian Pillman and see how it works against the one man crime spree of ECW Taz and the music that they have put on Peacock for Taz is God awful. Tony. <laughs> okay. I think in this era, he was coming out to war machine by kiss, which is just a badass song as you know. Right. right. And now, I mean, they're using fucking slide whistles in his song. Like somebody up there yeah. is not a Taz fan. Yeah. Well, how can you not be a Taz fan? I mean, I mean let, if you, how can you not be a Taz fan? I, I often describe to people Taz and DDP. And I think you'll get this. I love them both, but even I can admit they're a lot at times, but if you can yeah. deal with that, it's going to be a fantastic friendship. Yeah, I I just absolutely love, and you know what you you know this before I even met him and started working with him, we were watching ECW back then. Yes, and I absolutely loved him because I thought he was just he was legit. It's believable, which he is. Yes, You're believable, right? And and now that I got to meet him and know how he is, it's just he makes me laugh more than any person that I've ever been around. And sometimes it's. He does, he's not, a, he's, he's, not, not a, he's not trying to make you laugh. That's not his purpose, no. but you just can't help but get right. tickled at him. Yeah. I just absolutely love working with him. Um, he just, uh, look how great Jericho just, looks at this point. Jericho has wrestled yeah. all over the world, including Japan and Mexico. Now he's in the ECW arena wrestling Taz. And, uh, that's Bill Alfonso, former referee. Yeah who you yep. knew from back in the day. And now he's uh, running around blowing a whistle for Taz and, mm -hmm. and check Taz out here. It's funny because not too long ago, you and I watched episodically every episode of JCP through 1986. Right. And we saw a lot of Ron Garvin uh -huh. and watching that with you made me realize, and I texted Taz and I said, Hey man, much of your inspiration was Ronnie Garvin. And he immediately replied and says, who the fuck told you that? And I said, Oh, I'm sorry. I just saw the similarities. He goes, no, Connie, seriously, who told you that? And I go, I just watched, we're watching all of 86 and I'm watching more Ronnie Garvin maybe than I ever have in a row. And I mm -hmm. see a lot of similarities. He goes, bro, I patterned so much after him. Wow. And if you take a look and watch, you'll see like, even like his big tree trunk legs and the, and the, the, just his body type. Now, I'm not saying all the jujitsu and all that stuff. I mean, clearly he's doing his own MMA spin on it. And I guess we should mention that the UFC at this point has been around for three years. So okay. fans are starting to, people are at least aware of what ultimate fighting is, but nobody really knows about jujitsu the way they do now. Um, yeah. and, and, and it's not like Taz ever called himself a, a jujitsu expert or whatever, but he's doing judo throws and all this other stuff. And it, he was just at the right place at the right time with this presentation and character. I loved this yeah. version of Taz, man. Yeah. Notice when, looked, you're, when you're looking at the crowd too, Tony, just the composition of the crowd. Uh -huh. There might be a couple of ladies there, but there's not a ton. And there's not a lot of families there. Like this is catering to dudes, the hardcore wrestling fan. And, and there are more kids and there are more ladies at AEW these days, but the hardcore fans back then, by and large, all dudes. Yeah. You know what? This is, uh, the, it, it changed a lot. He, uh, I talked about this. I, I think I talked about this with Dave Pinter one time. 
that ba- that back in the eighties, um, there were a lot of female fans, right? Yes, groupies. They call they were called rats, which is a, not a good term to use, really, but they were groupies, and they would be waiting out in the back for the guys to come through. And then it changed to all guys, right? Yes, and and now it's still a lot of all guys, but there's girls in there too. Just, I mean, wherever we go, there's always a group that's hanging out where we drive into. And now it's, it's almost more families. I've seen families hang out in the back waiting for guys to come through, uh, parents with their kids. So it's, it went from groupies to all guys to a lot more families now. And I think that's because the guys who 30 years ago loved this wants their kids to experience what they loved. Right. So I I think that's, I think the fan bases have changed. We see more kids now than ever before. Um, you you ain't seeing many kids in this, this audience, (laughs) but, uh, you see them a lot now. And, and I love that. Even though we are. Uh, TV 14. Speaking of, uh, of kids, I want to give a shout yeah. out to one of our kids here on the show. As you and I are recording today is pond water. Dave's birthday. Holy smokes. Really? And of course we've had a lot of fun doing those silly goofy ass commercials once upon a time about right. pond water, Dave. And of course that was at the height of the pandemic. And, uh, we've had a lot of fun with that silly commercial and He's embraced it and has his own podcast and, uh, you'll never guess what he decided to do on his special day, his birthday, Tony, you'll never guess what he decided to do on his birthday. Uh, it would be go to a wrestling match. Couples proctology exam. He and his wife went to the proctologist together, holding hands, getting that butthole looked out inside and out along with his okay. wife, not just by himself but along with his wife on his birthday. Okay. Here's the deal with uh, the blood tests being so elaborate the way they are now. Yeah. You don't need for stick your finger up their ass anymore. Well, I think he's just doing it for fun. You know, apparently so. Yeah. So the old colonoscopy Jones bottoms up. Here we go. No, you're, you're, you're ribbing me on that one. No, No, I swear. Uh, Dave Silva can chime in if he wants, but in the group chat, yeah. He wrote exactly this. I'm having a colonoscopy this morning. And then later someone said, heck of a way to spend your birthday morning. He huh. says, passing out and doing butt stuff is different at 58. Steph is having one too. Couples colonoscopy is the most pond water huh. on brand thing ever. Okay. Now see now that that's, uh, I didn't know it was colonoscopy. I get that. A couple's colonoscopy. A couple's colonoscopy. I've heard of couples massages, Tony. I never heard of a couple's colonoscopy. Well, yeah, here's the deal about colonoscopy. Everybody's different, but when I get a colonoscopy, I'm out just like that. Boom. So wow, what does it man. matter if your your wife's beside you or not? You, you don't know where you are. You're gone. And, uh, it's like the last colonoscopy I had is like, Okay, Mr. Shivani, uh, we are going now to administer the uh, boom. That's the last thing I heard. Last going to administer, and boom, I was out. As you and I are recording, he's telling me he hasn't eaten in 48 hours in order to get ready for the uh, colonoscopy, the old clean out Jones. By the way, the worst part of of a colonoscopy is the shit you got to drink to clear yourself out. Have you had one? Not yet. Well, Jesus, dude, you're 40. Oh, was I supposed to get one at 40? Well, no, 50. But right. why not get one for fun? Why would I do that? Okay, look at this. Chad Taz is choking out Jericho. And not letting him go. By the way, you just saw Jericho get dumped on his head. If you've been uh-huh. watching AEW Dynamite, you know, a few weeks ago, we saw a bunch of throws uh, from Hook, Taz's son, uh-huh. on Jericho. And what yeah. made me laugh, Tony, is I saw people online saying, LOL hook ain't strong enough. Ain't got the strength to really pick him up. LOL. I think sometimes people forget it's been so long since they've seen an actual suplex that they just have conditioned themselves that 
when you go to suplex a guy, he goes eight feet in the air and just goes fucking flying. Like yeah. they're so far removed from actual wrestling. Yes. Jericho dead weighted him because hook wanted it to look like a real suplex. Like his dad did. He's not doing, Hey, why don't you just pick me up and throw me nine feet? I mean, I know that's what they normally do in pro wrestling, but a real suplex, that's not what happened. Yeah. One of those people who say that online, just go outside and stand in front of the traffic and like a big truck run over them, then back over them. So Taz is, uh, has finally let loose of Chris Jericho and because Pillman came in, but even the eliminators couldn't get him to let loose. <laughs> Neither could little Guido who just got dumped on his head. And Pillman takes a powder. Taz wanted a piece of Brian Pillman. He's not going to get it. Check out what happens here though. What he gets fuck? somebody coming to do a little run in here. El Who's Porto that? Ricano. El, El what? El Porto <laughs> Ricano. Got a backdrop <laughs> driver on the ground there on the concrete. <laughs> Check this out. Look at the escape. Shane Douglas wants a piece of Pillman. Look at Pillman. Leaps over the top rope, right into the arms of the lineman from the Eagles, Mr. Boatswain, <laughs> and out they go the front door. It's so great. And that's 911 right there. Oh. Oh, this is good. Right? This shit was so good, man. It was so good. How old were you back then? Just I about, was uh, 14. Right? Oh, I can see where 14 year old kids would just fucking this up. Yeah, man. And I can awesome. also see where their parents would not let them go to the arena. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now my parents didn't know, you know, back then it's funny though, because you know, amongst the kids, there was a discussion. Oh, WWF and WCW is fake, but ECW is real. That's sure. Like, well, it's not real, but it does feel more real. It feels more authentic. Yeah. It feels yeah. more credible, but not real. I said that yeah. was nine one one. That's not nine one one. I think of all the things that I've heard about our sport, and it is a sport, by the way, uh, all the things I've heard about it is, was what Flair said when somebody asked him if it was fake. I think it was even on his, uh, his 30 for 30 or whatever it is. He said, it's not fake, it's choreographed, but it's real. In other words, they really do beat the shit out of each other. They really do get hurt. They really do, especially in this day and age, they really do lay it in. Uh, I've often thought that, that there's a lot of the art of wrestling that has kind of been lost because they do lay it in. Um, and, um, so, but it's real, no question. And people, people will say to me today, I've got a lot of, in this area I live in, I've got a lot of people here that know who I am, uh, especially up at the Kroger that I go to. One of the guys at Kroger the other day said, man, I, I miss the Crockett days in the eighties. I said, yeah, man, that's back when it was real. And we both laugh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. It, it really is. It's, it's a. Pro wrestling is a wonderful thing at its core. There's a lot of bad about it, but you know what? There's a lot of bad about every job and every sport. Um, oh, Lord of mercy. I'm sorry. I, my, uh, my attention just left me. Attention. What was I talking about? Raven is here on a, a bad wheel with some crutches. He's really struggling uh -huh. to get around, even in the ring. He's got okay. alongside him blue Manny and Stevie Richards. And there's Kamana on who, uh, has a very short yeah. skirt, see-through skirt with a, a thong underneath. And yeah, they're going to cut away and pay the bills for some commercials. And here's Lance, Wright, Who's going to be plugging the WCW pay-per-view. The ECW fan of the week is without question. Anyone at WCW with even a smidgen of decision-making responsibility, because obviously these brain surgeons have far too much time on their hands, watching ECW on TV and videotape. Trying to copy us to save their unsalvageable pay per views, which you would agree they most definitely should censor. Of course, he's referencing the terrible ECW or yeah. WCW uncensored pay per view. This is bottom line. Uh, you guys really suck. 
that pay-per-view <laughs> happened this same weekend. And one week after uh-huh. this is when we would see WrestleMania 12. Of course, uh-huh. CCW is not yet a part of the pay-per-view universe. What was that real quick clip that I saw Kevin Sullivan in? Do you see that? Uh, Kevin Sullivan used to be a part of ECW, if that's what you mean. Okay. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Well, there, there's woman. Yep. Okay. They did a blinding angle like they did with JYD once upon a time with Sandman here. And uh-huh. then of course he reveals that he really wasn't blind and he's going to cane the ever loving shit out of Tommy dreamers head here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, that didn't feel good. Uh-uh. Sandman, the ECW world title. So we're just sort of recapping the story of how Shane Douglas, Tommy dreamer and Sandman stories in ECW have intertwined, even right. using some, uh, some fan cam footage here. Nice storytelling where they can tie it all together. I didn't realize that they were so heavy into telling us we sucked back then. Well, you got to remember Paul Heyman didn't have the best exit from WCW. Mm. And so he, they're constantly going to be taking shots at WCW. And part of the reason of course, is because Paul Heyman's being uh, subsidized by the WWF. He's getting thousands sure. of dollars a week from Vince McMahon, although this isn't their developmental territory, it is sort of unofficial, their, their developmental territory, I suppose. Well, I, uh, you know what? I'm glad to hear that Paul got money from the WWF. That's, you know, that, that obviously helped him pay all the guys that he paid. Yeah. He was still making payroll here in 96 as they started to expand is when he had to mm. start offering bigger contracts to keep guys like Eric Bischoff from coming and signing guys like Stevie Richards, who's in the ring and like Raven, who's in the ring to bigger money contracts. So in order to compete, he started to try to do that and well, it just didn't work out, which is why you've been a bad influence on our listeners. Brooke McGaw, who, uh, is, uh, your goddaughter says, do you feel that ECW could have had longevity if Paul Heyman didn't spend all the money on cheeseburgers? Uh, I, I think Brooke, I think Paul spent, uh, he spent a lot of money on cheeseburgers, but I think Paul like spent the money on like whole turkeys and whole pies. Uh, and that cost him because those are very expensive. Whole sides of, of roast beef, uh, go into a barbecue restaurant and ask for the, the whole, you know, leg of the pig or something like that. Just so he'd have a snack. So yeah, I think probably good. By the way, you see the ECW. And I, go ahead. I I just I just wonder that. I hope they don't have a buffet at the at the uh, induction ceremony for him because he may still be eating when his name is called. I hope not, but maybe they'll have, maybe maybe I can go there and help him chase him to the dais. I don't know. Idea. Genovius Mac. Uh, was clearly listening to our ECW, uh, banter about cactus Jack. He says, Tony, what was your favorite cactus Jack match? Well, the novice, that would have to go back to Halloween havoc in 93. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that would be the spin the wheel, uh, make the deal, which ended up being a Texas death match against Vader. Um, that was absolutely a bloodbath and uh, Vader and cactus Jack did not pull any punches. Tony Schiavone, if I can say that in the third person, and Jesse the Body Ventura were a wash in blood because it spilled all over into us from uh, from the blows. I remember Cactus was right in our corner, being hit by Vader, and the blood was just flying everywhere. So that was my favorite and most memorable. Thanks for the question. Uh, another question from uh, Bryant, who a uh, big fan of uh, the Waterloo. Iowa hall of fame, which you're going to take your rightful place in July. And he says, Joey styles is the voice of ECW. Would Tony have rather called shows solo or did he enjoy having partners more? Oh no. Partners is the way to go. Um, I've called matches solo. Don't like doing it. I don't mind if they ask me to do it, but I don't like doing it. I really think a partner is important. And I think any partner that's worked with me knows that I give them ample opportunity to talk. I want them to be as much part of the show as me, but yeah, 
Uh, three man booth. We've kind of worked into a little bit. It's still kind of difficult. Two man's better. Four people out there is a clusterfuck. But yeah, partners, way to go. In the ring, of course, Stevie Richards was explaining, "Hey, uh, Raven has gout. He's not going to be able to wrestle." <laughs> and and Raven cuts a promo and says, "Actually, for once, Stevie's right." I'm not going to be able to defend this title tonight. And of course, Shane Douglas is like, there's no chance on God's green earth. You're getting out of here. And then the match starts. I mean, the guy came to the ring on one leg wearing crutches. He's just now taking his jacket and, uh, and belt off and he's hopping around, but we got a title shot here, a title match, Raven and Shane Douglas, two OGs of ECW. Yeah, absolutely. Then of course, Raven came on to, uh, WCW later. Yep, about a year and change later. And, of course, Shane did as well. Yeah, no doubt. All right. We got another question here from Eric Green. If uh, you were to go through AEW's library and start putting specials together, similar to WWF Home Video, what would be wow. your first feature? That's a great question, Tony. What would be your first feature if you were to do a Coliseum Video type thing for AEW? Well, let's see. I think the first feature would be um, I think I'd go back to revolution 2020 right before the pandemic in Chicago. Uh, that is where, and correct me if I'm wrong. And those of you are with us, uh, can correct me if I'm wrong. That is where John Moxley beat Jericho became the world champion. And that is where the young bucks faced Kenny Omega and hangman Adam page. in one of the greatest tag team matches I've ever been seen before. It's also where. Sammy Guevara wrestled Darby Allen. And that's the only matches I can remember right off the top. But that show to me was kind of what we were about. And of course, pandemic kept had about a couple of weeks after that and everything changed. But that was back in the heyday. That would be the first one. Go back and do Revolution 2020. We, uh, we got one more question here. We should hit Jim in Buffalo wants to know Paul E is going into the WWE hall of fame Friday night. Can Tony just say one nice thing about him in honor of that? Of course I can. I I'm ribbing rib each other all the time. People in wrestling. We really do. Okay. I've taken the rib obviously to my podcast, but Paul E is one of the greatest talkers the business has ever seen. Yes. By far. Nobody can cut a promo like Paul E. Dangerously, even today, or Paul Heyman. And I think he is deserved of this Hall of Fame honor for many, many reasons. Uh, but I think that uh, his ability to talk and cut a promo is far superior than almost anyone. He's one of the greatest promos ever. I mean, Flair. Cornette, Paul E, or Paul Heyman, uh, are three of the greatest talkers ever. Paul E knows, dangerously knows that to get over, you got to be able to talk, and he's able to do. Thank you, Jim and Buffalo. How about Hope there's snow. There is. Yeah. You know, I was, I was flying into Buffalo. We had, uh, Toronto recently. Right. And I, I was flying into Buffalo and they said, I, I got to the airport and they said, your flight's going to be delayed an hour and a half because of snow in Buffalo. And I went, I looked and they, they, they weren't showing any snow on, on the weather app. So I went back, I said, ma'am, there's snow in Buffalo. She said, yes. I said, well. Um, uh, a friend of mine, which is Jeff Jones is right now just texting me and he's in the air and he's landing in Buffalo. She said, what airliner is, is he on? And I said, what airline is he on? Which is different than what I was flying, which was Delta. And she said, oh no. In Delta, well, we take more precautions than anybody else. And I'm thinking, yikes, that's bullshit. But there you go. That's the line I got. And I guess they did. I, I guess they did. And I found out it was just flurries. I know I'm rambling here, but right now, uh, Shane Douglas was yeah, yeah. spanking the kimono on Alea. Yes. Right. And yeah. she likes it. 
Yeah. Jim tells us we haven't had snow in weeks. But that. Oh, she wants more of it, doesn't she? Okay. Well, what are we watching here? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Jimmy Hart's got to be upset right now watching this. Oh, he pushed her down. Oh. Pissed her and pushed her down. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell is right? What the fuck's wrong with him? So he would rather not kiss her and just get a nut shot from Raven. I there guess. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Raven on one foot, man. Pretty cool. Hopping around, dude. Yeah. Man, this is fun watching old old school ECW. We've seen some ECW pay-per-views before, but we haven't watched a lot of just regular ECW television. But you could see why this was such a uh, a hit with, you know, young adult men and mm-hmm. adolescent teens, male sure. adolescent teens. Like, this is their jam. Like, violence and scantily clad girls and foul language. and Here come the meanie. Here comes Stevie. Oh, I think Manny's going to set up. Yeah, he's setting up for a mini salt. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> Douglas <laughs> moves out of the way. Belly to belly for uh, Stevie. Belly to belly for Manny. Belly to belly for Raven. Hooks the leg. No referee. The referee got hit with that chair, remember? Yep, he's down. What do we have? Oh, the Harrises. Yep. They're part of Raven's crew. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like uh six on one. If you count, come on in now. Mm-hmm. Raven makes the cover after the Harrises take out Douglas. Oh, kicks no, out. still kicked out. Yeah. It's very, I'm telling you, dude, this, this inspired so much wrestling that came after. Of course. And to kick out just when you think he wasn't going to kick out has inspired a lot of wrestling. Absolutely. That's what made me think of yeah. it. It was like, that's a dynamite. That's a rampage. That's a collision. That's right. Right. Oh, he's not getting up from that. He's out. How about that? A belly to belly mm-hmm. into the top turnbuckle. I don't think I've seen that since. Yeah. That was cool. In an alternate yeah, universe, yeah. Shane Douglas was an even bigger star. Mm-hmm. I was convinced that he was going to be, I mean, he can, he has a good look. He's hateable. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just a natural heel. He does his job so well. And he can talk his ass off. He can talk. I was thinking the same thing. It just feels a like, great. Yeah. Great deep voice. Right. I wish when that, when ECW was getting hot here and I know he did so much great stuff, but imagine if he was in WCW and he was battling the NWO. Or Mm -hmm. imagine if he was in the attitude era and he had a live mic in the WWE and he could do his thing there. Like, yeah, I don't know. I know he had already been both of those places, but it could have been such a a hit in either one of those environments. Got to be thinking now, like, you know, like many fans do today, especially watching dynamite, what is it going to take to get a win here? Cause everybody's on the chair. That'll do it every time. That does it. Yep. Look at the crowd. They wanted Douglas to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pretty silent. That's the idea, man. They're disappointed. They wanted Shane Douglas to get the win and wasn't happening. I love the term. He wins despite the gout. (laughs) (laughs) That's what Joey just said. He wins it despite the gout. (laughs) Oh. Now he's getting Boy, his heat always, back there. Here you go. Yeah. We always have fun with these because they are fun. And who's he calling in now, man? I guess the Harris boys to come back. Needs a little reinforcement. Needs some backups. Yep. Harris boys are back in. They fit the yeah, ECW was, style, don't they? I mean, they look like little miniature yeah. bruiser brodies. Not even that yeah. miniature. I mean, they're. Yeah. Bruiser Brody inspired for sure. 
Oh, guess what? The dick remover. Oh, Shane Douglas has a, he's able to counteract oh. the dick remover. No dick remover. Sorry, Lois. Uh, Put your pussy hat on. Well, uh, no, please don't. <laughs> I love you. Like, I'm not sure what it means either, but let's not tempt fate. Exactly. I got a lot of shit to do today. I don't, I don't, I don't need that around diverting my attention <laughs> from everything else. You trying to ruin my day, Conrad? Let's talk about Pond Water's couples colonoscopy instead. <laughs> huh. Who do, who was that? Was that Tommy Dreamer that came out to help? Yeah. Shane? Yep. Okay. You know they, they did a lot of. Uh oh. Somebody's oh, getting a dick get remover. A dick remover on Tommy Dreamer. Oh, there's nope. Sandman. Okay. How great is it that we saw the little package telling the detailed story between Sandman, Shane Douglas, and Tommy Dreamer? And they all wind up saving each other here in the main event yeah. against Raven. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Man, he wielded that son of a bitch, didn't he? Dude, there was nothing. He didn't pull yeah. nothing on that cane. He was no. letting it rip tater chip. Yep. Oh. How about this? We're going to see uh, him set up the chair on the ankle of Raven. Mm. But, uh, wait a minute. Sandman's going to get him to stop, but Shane Douglas sneaks in. He'll do it. No problem. Of course, that's the same ankle he was hopping around on. Mm -hmm. That's the gout. The that gout. gout will get you, man. You ever had gout? No, never had gout. Me neither. They say when you have gout, you should eat cherries. You well, heard that one? I have not heard that. Yeah. No. Something in cherries helps remove gout or helps with the pain. I don't know what it is. I, I, I got to be honest. I don't eat a lot of cherries. I'm, I'm a cherry fan. Like my one of my favorite ice creams is Cherry Garcia. Yeah. But I, I don't, like if I went to my fridge right now, there's not a jar of cherries. I used to keep some in the bar downstairs, but they'd yeah. always expire because nobody would ever use them. Don't, don't get the jar of cherries. Go to your produce section when cherry season, which is summertime, and get a bag of them. Okay, wash them up and just eat them one at a time. You'll really like them if they're from Washington. They're really good. Did you say Washington? Washington State. Washington State is your go-to for cherries. Yeah, I believe so. Like Georgia peaches and Florida oranges? Yeah. Yeah, like that. Or South Carolina peaches. South oh. Carolina is known for its peaches. Or Alabama cotton. <laughs> so that's about all we got. Now they're going off the air here. You see the credits rolling and there's a big tease. Is Sam man going to hit Shane Douglas? And of course, Douglas is begging off. And he was saying to Tommy dreamer and to uh, Sam man, remember the deal, remember the deal. And of course, Joey styles is wondering what, what is he talking about? And as soon as Sam man turns his back, you'll see. Douglas go from begging off, writhing in pain to laughing, showing that Douglas, he may be aligning with the baby faces, but he's a double agent. Look at him laughing. Yeah. He's a heel. He's so <laughs> talented, man. Such a big Shane Douglas yeah. guy. Glad we got to see this man. There's Scorpio. He too yeah. is going to be headed to the world wrestling federation later this year as flash funk. <laughs> having been shown the door in WCW. He was kind of ahead of his time in WCW too. Uh, was really uh, a talented guy. Well, well, Tony, this was our first show, unfortunately without bug. Uh, yeah. but, but I appreciated everything you said, and we're going to try to get together some fun bug merch to, uh, to help some other dogs in your area very, very soon. We'll have that next week here on the show. Or we'll endeavor to do that. And in the meantime, man, there's so much wrestling to consume. Don't forget dynamite tonight, the ring of honor pay-per-view super card of honor, Mark Briscoe challenging Eddie Kingston for the ring of honor world title happens on pay-per-view this Friday and on Saturday and Sunday, I think you'll be able to see Tony Schiavone at WrestleCon and Saturday Friday during the Friday during the day too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and Saturday also night, you've also got a uh, collision at a special time, 1130 Eastern. So you might want to check your DVRs or your, whatever you use to watch TV to make sure that it knows about 1130 Eastern 
you don't want to miss that show. Also at uh, WrestleCon on Thursday night, there is a Q&A with Sting uh, that I'll be hosting. And then I believe on Sunday morning, we're having a breakfast. If you're a part of that, I'll be hosting that breakfast as well. Uh, I'm there thanks to the good people in High Spots, my good buddies in High Spots. Uh, and then I've got Saturday night, I have a, uh, a private signing, which I think it's going to be on Facebook. I don't have the information for that. Sorry, I don't, but just check on Facebook and do a search and I'm sure you'll find me. Well, you'll get so, the information to Silva and we'll be sure to uh, tweet it out. So it's WHW okay. Monday. Just make sure you're following us on Twitter. If you haven't already check us out on YouTube too. That's where we'll start doing some more polls and taking your questions. It's whwmonday.com is where you can find our YouTube. That's whwmonday.com. Uh, but right now, Tony, it looks like it's about that time. And from all of us here at uh, WHW Monday, we would like to say congratulations once again to Paul Heyman for being inducted this weekend in the WWE Hall of Fame. Paul, you earned it. We're desperately out of time. See you next week on What Happened When. We come to you each and every Wednesdays on Cumulus Westwood One. But Mondays, we come to you exclusively and ad-free on Patron. Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And of course, adfreeshows.com. <laughs> tax season is here, which means you've received or are expecting that tax refund any day now. And you're thinking about what to spend it on. How about a new home? With SaveWithConrad.com, we're helping renters become homeowners every single day, and it's more affordable than you think. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need a huge down payment. In fact, you may not need a down payment at all. At SaveWithConrad.com, we take the stress out of the home buying process. We'll determine your buying power. We'll even help you find a realtor. And unlike the banks, we don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how. So if you're not ready right now, we'll get you on a plan to be ready. Stop throwing your money away, paying someone else's mortgage with your rent and start the path towards owning your own home today at savewithconrad.com. NMLS number 32416, equal housing lender, savewithconrad.com.